Hello class and Dr. Nice. this is Raquel Garcia. I chose to do my research on the historiography of the American founding. The historiography and the American founding has had broad and diverse narratives added to it. <clears throat> Some of the historiography uh, has attributed the freedom, divine economic, classical intellectual inspirations to the founding. And so the first person to really write about the founding um, in a history was Mercy Otis Warren, and she called the Republic a beautiful fabric of republicanism. And then there's George Bancroft's 10 volume um, history of the United States from the discovery of the American continent, where he really has a robust nationalist sentiment that the United States of America constitutes an essential portion of a great political system, embracing all civilized nations of the earth. And that that was the case because of some divine inspiration. Then there's Charles Austin Beard, who really ushers in the progressive thought with his Marxist ideologies and economic uh, perusal of the founders. And his ideal or idea is that the founders were not motivated by ideals of freedom, but they actually were motivated to protect their own property and to make themselves uh, basically more powerful uh, and were really about their own self-interest. And maybe in reaction to that in part, but also um, to what was happening in the world, uh, World War II, the consensus historians started to focus on the special American uh, democracy and identity and uh, the unified American public that was a part of that founding. Then you have the Lockean School of Thought that Merle Cordy's essay uh, first started with a great Mr. Locke, an American philosopher that was actually during the dominant progressive time uh, uh, era. And he actually writes that Locke was America's philosopher and that he was cited by John and Samuel Adams and Otis, and that he had a profound influence on the founders' imaginations and formulations for the American founding. Then you have Bernard Balin's Pulitzer Prize winning uh, The Ideological Origins of the American Revolution, where he proposes that the ideology of the revolution derived from many sources was dominated by a peculiar strand of British political thought but that there were many different sources for this, the pamphleteers, essays, and other miscellaneous uh, commentators that actually contributed to the intellectual um, and ideological uh, framework for the American founding. And then there's Alan Wood, and he goes a step further and saying that as he went through all the sources, he agrees with Balin, uh, he, saw a pattern and that the there's a transformation that American thought underwent from the Declaration of Independence to the writing of the Constitution. And so then you have some others who um, cite that it was the uh, classics that really had a strong influence like J.G.A. J. J. Pocock with his uh, look at Machiavelli's works um, and their influence. And then Aaron Shalev, who believed the classics were very important as well, but even to the point where the founders were acting out different parts to that. Um, and so then you have Thomas Jefferson and we go back and I wonder what he would say about uh, some of the things historians have come up with. But I think he might agree with some, but I also think um, when he said this, this kind of points to the fact that others maybe not so much. He wrote to John Adams, February 28, 1796. And he writes, this I hope will be the age of experiments in government and that their basis will be founded on principles of honesty, not of mere force. We have seen no instance of this since the days of the Roman Republic, nor do we read of any before that. Neither force or corruption has been the principle of every modern, either force or corruption has been the principle of every modern government. 
Thank you and have a wonderful night.